A shocking Smash announcement was made at the Game Awards recently, with this being Sephiroth from Final Fantasy getting into the roster. This famous villain from the seventh main entry in the series finally gets to duke it out with Nintendo's best. Equipped with a big sword and several magical and ranged attacks to use as well, showcased more in the recent presentation, but why did we get Sephiroth? Now, there's been a lot of positive reaction to his reveal, I'll give it that. It's certainly one that fans wanted, and that definitely goes a long way in the character selection process. Well, maybe the people complaining about just another enemy swordsman getting into the roster aren't too happy about his inclusion, but do we really have to talk about that? He's not a generic anime swordsman. He's especially popular in Japan, where he was one of the most frequently requested characters, but there's gotta be a little bit more to it than that, right? Well, obviously the answer is yes, and we're going to be examining it today. In this video, we're gonna be breaking down the real significance of Sephiroth's inclusion, some signs that were pointing to his reveal before it actually happened, and what it may say about the next characters that are going to be announced for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. With all that being said, let's get started. I feel that before we get into the significance of his inclusion, I want to talk about signs that were pointing to his reveal before it actually happened at the Game Awards. And this is because the first real sign of it actually came all the way back in 2015, when Cloud was first announced for the roster of Super Smash Bros. 4. So back when we were getting downloadable content for Smash 4 and fans were still on that hype train for new characters getting revealed, we finally had a new announcement at the end of a Nintendo Direct. And that announcement would go on to become one of the most iconic and surprising reveals of all time. And in that reveal, it began by showing the Super Smash Bros. logo crossing over with Final Fantasy VII. Yes, VII specifically. Now at the time, many obviously didn't fixate on this minute point, and this was probably just because Cloud is the protagonist of that game, and it was just a massive reveal for a new character getting into the roster. But I think that the fact that they showed the logo crossing over with Final Fantasy VII shows that the crossover was mainly just with that one game from the franchise in particular. There wasn't much for fans to go off of to say, yeah, there's gonna be other content from other Final Fantasy games coming into Smash in the future. There wasn't really much that we could base that opinion off of because it said Final Fantasy VII. So when I was making my pick for Final Fantasy in the video that I did about what if every series in Smash got one new fighter, my pick was Black Mage. But that was under the assumption that Final Fantasy as a whole is going to be represented in Smash. And I did mention in that video, if it's just with Seven specifically as this crossover, Sephiroth is definitely the most likely character. And well, here we go. But I think it is interesting now knowing that Sephiroth was the character that was revealed, that this could have been hinted at long ago. We should have been expecting back then, yeah, if there is going to be a new Final Fantasy character, it's probably going to be from Seven. Another sign pointing to this is that there were only two music tracks from Final Fantasy Seven, and no spirits outside of Cloud included. Now many, including myself to an extent, thought that this was just due to Square being stingy with their properties. After all, when Cloud was first announced for Smash 4, Nintendo and Square Enix, yes, they had worked on some things before, but definitely not to this scale with a Final Fantasy character being included in their premier fighting franchise. So it was expected that Cloud wouldn't get the complete treatment as most of the other DLC characters being included at the time, like Ryu for example, because Square would have been a little bit more stingy and hesitant. But when we got the reveal for Hero as a playable character in Smash Ultimate, and all those music tracks and spirits from Dragon Quest got into Smash, that didn't make as much sense to me anymore. So wait, if it's just Square being stingy with this stuff, then how come Hero could get it, but Cloud didn't? There was also a reveal around that time of several Final Fantasy games coming to the Nintendo Switch, including Final Fantasy VII, which you could play on the console right now. This affirmed even further that Nintendo and Square's relationship had been growing and blossoming even more, something I hinted back in previous videos in this style about the real significance. I was talking about how Nintendo and Square are becoming closer and closer together, and that could lead to further partnership in the future. And because, as we got announced in the Sephiroth presentation, there were a lot of music tracks now coming from Final Fantasy getting into the game, it's safe to assume that these tracks may have been intentionally left out to save for an inclusion of another Final Fantasy VII character later down the line. This helps a lot with the ambiguity argument for new fighters here, and I'm going to explain more a little bit what that is later on. So either Nintendo and Square's relationship at the time of Cloud's initial inclusion and by the time Smash Ultimate released still wasn't at that level, or all of that content was intentionally left out to save for Sephiroth, 
and that was a sign pointing to his inclusion in the future. Pretty interesting rank there, but with all that being said, Sephiroth is here now. So the signs pointing to his inclusion, yes, can be used in a good way to help predict new fighters for the future, but that's not necessarily the significance of Sephiroth himself. Let's talk a little bit about that. And the first significant piece to Sephiroth's inclusion is reinforcing the heroes versus villains dynamic which has been going on a lot for Ultimate. And what I mean by this is there are many more villains being included in Smash Ultimate than there had been in previous Smash Brothers entries before. Wolf was the first villain included in Smash Ultimate as a new addition, this obviously being a character that was brought back from Super Smash Brothers Brawl after being cut for Smash 4. And he provides a villain to the Star Fox franchise, one that was very highly requested. Ridley and Dark Samus get shown next as villains for the Metroid series, again characters that were highly requested. King K. Rool comes along to provide a villain to the Donkey Kong franchise. Hell, even Piranha Plant could be considered a villain for the cast of Mario characters. Cloud never had a villain and now finally gets one with Sephiroth. So will this happen for other franchises that don't currently have a villain yet? My answer to that is probably yes. You see, Sephiroth being included as a villain as DLC is now the first paid DLC fighter to fit this category. Previously, all these characters had been protagonists. Piranha Plant was technically a DLC character, but not one that you had to pay for, and was more of a fun joke addition. One of my favorite additions into Ultimate, I'll definitely give it that, but not one that many would go out and pay for specifically just by the name value. But Sephiroth now being included sets a precedent for other villains to be included in this vein in the future as DLC. What about the other franchises for Smash Ultimate that don't currently have a villain yet? Could they be receiving one as DLC? Or by that logic, what about providing a hero to a series that doesn't currently have one yet? Rathlos is a boss in Smash Ultimate, but there's no Monster Hunter in there to fight him yet. Sephiroth being included to provide the villain to Cloud could set a precedent for characters being included to fill this role for other franchises, as has been continuing the pattern for Ultimate. This could also be considered a sign pointing to the inclusion of Sephiroth as well, but I believe it's more of a significant aspect than a sign, because now we know that DLC could be used to fill this gap. As previously, every DLC character that was a third party one had been a representative for a new franchise into Smash. Joker represented Persona, Hero represented Dragon Quest, Banjo and Kazooie represented, well, Banjo Kazooie, Terry represented represented Fatal Fury, and Steve represented Minecraft. Sephiroth breaks this pattern, which I'm happy to see. And this kind of leads into our second point of significance here, by providing another third-party franchise with a second character. Smash fans have made up a bunch of ridiculous rules over the years, and prior to Ultimate, believe it or not, one that got a lot of traction in the comment section of my videos was that third-party franchises could only get one fighter each. Not only did it not even make much sense at the time because of publishers like Capcom already getting two characters with Mega Man and Ryu for example, but in Ultimate that finally got disproven, with both Street Fighter and Castlevania getting two fighters. And now Sephiroth finally adds a third franchise that could be under this category with Final Fantasy. This is significant because that means that this trend may continue in the future, as as I was just mentioning, it's the first third party franchise to receive a second fighter as DLC. Not just a new third party series coming or an existing first party series getting one, so that could mean that other characters in this vein may be included in the future. A new Sonic character anyone? Come on man, we have to get one eventually, right? How did Street Fighter, Castlevania, and Final Fantasy all get a second character before Sonic did? I really want a new Sonic character to be included and I think this makes it just a little bit more likely. Another significant piece of this inclusion is that another Square character's chances may have been hurt by this. Having a Square character in this pass, in my opinion, makes it a bit unlikelier to get another one, such as Gino or Sora. Gino's chances have been hurt even more because he was shown as a Mii costume, which is really sad for his fan base. We have gotten two Microsoft characters, but those were in separate passes, and now the same goes for Square. Is it possible we get a third? Absolutely. But so far there hasn't been a precedent set for more than two getting in from a singular publisher in the same fighter pass. So if that's the case, I think some of the popular picks like Geno and Sora have slightly reduced chances because Nintendo would likely have more publisher variety than this. We can't entirely write Sora off because he's a very popular character, but man I think it would still be a lot more unlikely considering that Sephiroth already got in. Another piece of significance here is the ambiguity factor that I was mentioning before. One significant takeaway from the reveal of Sephiroth is that if there's some unexplained reason behind the omission of certain characters or certain content from a franchise, maybe they're in the pipeline for the future. There's a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles X content missing in Smash Ultimate. 
Why? It seems like such a simple thing to just add a few music tracks and more than two spirits, but why haven't they added more? I've talked about this before. It could either be because of legal issues like many were speculating about the lack of Square music for Cloud, or it could be because, like Sephiroth, they're waiting to reveal Elma for the future. And I personally love a reveal of Elma that would unfortunately likely mean that Rex and Pyra aren't going to be included, so that'll probably piss some people off as well, but you're not going to be making everybody happy with any character, I guess. There's several other instances like this. I've gone over in a video 10 of the most surprising omissions of characters in Smash Ultimate that you could watch after this one, but Sephiroth being included definitely adds to the merit of some of those characters getting included because it now explains the lack of Final Fantasy content when Cloud was first revealed. And the last piece of significance about Sephiroth is that he's a combination of a recent character and an older character at the same time. If you look at the pattern of DLC characters that have been revealed so far, you have characters like Joker, Steve, Byleth, Min Min. Those are some new characters, like relatively new in history. Then you got some older characters, Banjo-Kazooie, Terry Bogard. Hero is a character who falls somewhat in the middle because Hero takes on the looks of different Dragon Quest characters throughout history, including the one from the most recent Dragon Quest title, and some from the very first Dragon Quest game. Sephiroth fits the role of a character who combines both the new and the old in this fighter's pass. Considering that he's a character from an older game, Final Fantasy VII, but the game has been remade as recently as this year. Sephiroth is now modernly relevant, but also has some historical impact. And because we saw that with a character like Hero, and now a character like Sephiroth, Maybe another character in that vein could be more likely to be included as well. We've only had one per pass so far, but I don't think that necessarily deconfirms another one. I think that would actually help a character's case. If you're proven historically and have a long track record, but have regained relevance in this modern day, it'll show to Sakurai and the team, as well as Nintendo who's allegedly choosing these characters, that this character, if carried over into a Smash Brothers game in the future, will likely still be relevant, because they've either been able to come back from a hiatus, or they've just simply maintained relevancy for a long time. But, if you don't think that a character who combines the old and the new is as likely in this fighter's past because Hero was in the last one and now Sephiroth is the only one for this one, then what do we have left? Well, this is where I've actually been doing a little bit of analysis. If you look at the first fighter's pass, there was a new character with Joker, a mixed character with Hero, two older characters with Banjo and Terry, and a new addition with Byleth. If you look at Fighters Pass 2, there have been two new characters already and a mixed character, which means that we could be in store for two more retro characters going forward if they're going to be following the same pattern as the first one. However, what gives a little bit more merit to my argument is that if you include Piranha Plant with that first batch of DLC, I definitely consider Piranha Plant to be a mixed character because Piranha Plant has been around for a long time, but he's maintained relevancy over the years. So if we're going with that exact same pattern with the first six DLC characters for this next six, this means that we could be in store for two more older characters and one mixed character of relevancy if that same pattern holds up. It may not hold up, but I think it is safe to assume that we're going to be getting at least one retro character because there were two in the first one. It wouldn't make much sense to me if this pass didn't have one. So that is a major takeaway that we could have going forward. Let me know your thoughts on the inclusion of Sephiroth and the presentation in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing and ticking the bell icon to ensure that you do not miss new ones going forward. Check out some of the previous videos that I made on the screen for you right now. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.